The following program presents principles designed to promote good health and is not intended to take the place of personalized professional care. The opinions and ideas expressed are those of the speaker. Viewers are encouraged to draw their own conclusions about the information presented. And welcome to Wonderfully Made. My name is Dr. Christine Salter, and I'm board certified in family medicine, and I'm in private practice in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we're going to be discussing about a simple home remedy called activated charcoal. And we have a guest with us, Mr. John Dinsley, who has written a book about charcoal. John, I'd like to welcome you to our program today. Dr. Salter, it's a pleasure to be here with you. So tell me, why did you write a book about charcoal? A good question. Why would anybody want to write something about what's left over from your campfire? Exactly. Or from your wood stove? Well, charcoal, as you said, activated charcoal or medicinal charcoal, actually has been used for many, many years. Even 1500 years BC, the Egyptians oh. were using it to control um, wounds, infections, odors. Um, but in this, the end of the 20th century, there was a, a tremendous interest in simple, natural home remedies. And because of my experience of, with charcoal, my traveling in different countries, uh, that's where it all goes back to. Well, that sounds really interesting. Um, so you've traveled um, Guatemala and mm -hmm. in other places, Nepal. Yes. A what real experiences did to, you have? To work there. And in working with the doctors there, the different health care providers, uh, especially learned the importance of a, a good health program. But when it came to treating disease, um, they instilled in me this notion that I needed to be the gatekeeper of my own health. Um, the people that they treated oftentimes were living remotely from where the clinic was or the hospital. And they did not want to put a dependence upon these people on the doctor, on the healthcare facility, because these people were so remote. Uh, they needed to be able to treat themselves oftentimes because it took maybe half a day to get to the nearest road, a couple of days to get to the nearest hospital. Emergency care was obviously out of reach. They needed something that they could use where they were. Where they were. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's true for here in North America too and in the other more developed countries. We do want people to be gatekeepers of their health mm -hmm. and to do what they can do uh, in the home setting even prior to seeing a um, physician. Well, a lot of people are asking the question, you know, with uh, drugs that are readily available, over-the-counter prescription, why should I even think about using something like charcoal? Charcoal. But I would like to uh, take a look at uh, our graphic here and look at some of the reasons why we today might want to think about using a simple natural remedy. Um, on our list we have iatrogenic death, nosocomial disease, plagues, cost, and calamities. Well, the first two, iatrogenic death and nosocomial disease, are actually it's actually a subgroup of iatrogenic death. And these are deaths that originate in the hospital because of uh, complications in either administering of drugs, surgery, and so forth. And these are large figures. Um, according to the Journal of Mer Medical Association in the year 2000, 225,000 people died because of iatrogenic death. So obviously, it's sort of like friendly fire. Right. You know, this is obviously not intentional, but there are consequences to using... Properly prescribed medicines. Yes, and so people are saying, is there something that I can use as an alternative that doesn't have the side effects associated? And if we use more heroic methods of treating disease right off the, be the beginning, what are we left with in an emergency? people are developing, um, or excuse me, diseases are developing uh, resistance to a lot of drugs. Uh, some diseases are triggered by antibiotics, and so we know this. What can people do for themselves that is safe? That's safe. That's absolutely true. Um, antibiotic resistance is uh, very concerning, um, rise at an alarming rate. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of patients, they come to physicians, you know, mm -hmm. They may only have a viral infection, but they want an antibiotic because they want to feel right. well 
right away. And what happens uh, is that we're under pressure to prescribe mm -hmm. and we really have to hold our ground. I have to hold my ground and say, well, let's um, allow your body, there's a virus, you know, we don't have an antibiotic for a virus. We want the body to deal with this, run the fever and that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then I like to have a simple remedy that I can have them do in the home that will make them feel better. Because basically they want to feel better and they're thinking in their mind sure. that if, if I prescribe an antibiotic, that's going to uh, make them feel better. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, they take the antibiotic and, oh, I'm not any better. Well, it's well, not we're, the we're virus. We're cultured that way in society to think that way, but there are safer alternatives. And charcoal is a simple natural remedy that, as far as we know, has no serious side effects. Um, our body does not digest charcoal, and so it's not assimilated. It's whatever serious side effects that have been noted in the literature are usually associated in hospitals. And today we're talking about home application of charcoal as a simple home remedy. So how does this work? Is there any science behind this? Oh, there's lots of science. I'm sure you've read in different medical journals, uh, the JMA, the Lancet, mm -hmm. clinical toxicology, just to name a few. These journals have picked up on this amazing ability for charcoal, medicinal charcoal, activated charcoal, to uh, absorb poisons, um, toxic waste products from cancerous wounds, uh, not just accidental poisoning in hospitals, but um, for instance, uh, poisonous plants, uh, mushroom poisoning, Amanita uh, poisoning, Amanita, or uh, insect bites, the brown recluse spider. Uh, sometimes it can stop anaphylactic shock from people who are have been stung by a bee or a hornet. Um, I was reading a, a, an article recently by a uh, an, uh, an allergist okay. in Canada one of the foremost uh, allergists on peanut. And he was saying that clinically, uh, they've been shown that charcoal can absorb the uh, peanut protein allergy, uh, allergen in 30 seconds. So clinically, there's a lot of research to show why it should work in the home. And so that's what we're talking today about, the home application. Now, a lot of healthcare professionals, including yourself, yes. have used charcoal. You use it on a professional basis. Um, for accidental poisoning in uh, emergency rooms. Poison control centers recommend it. Um, it's used in um, kidney dialysis machine. Uh, I've talked with even nurses and they don't realize that the kidney dialysis machine is actually a, a bed of granular charcoal mm -hmm. and the blood is filtered through that and it's clean because your kidneys have stopped doing the work of cleans cleansing the blood. Uh, interestingly enough, um, Dr. Hillebrand um, who's in charge, director of liver transplant at uh, La Loma Linda University yes. Hospital in California, has developed a liver dialysis machine to do similar to what the kidney, kidney dialysis, dialysis machine does. does. Uh, when the liver has, has stopped functioning or it's overloaded, can't perform its job properly of removing... It eliminating toxins. Exactly. So if a machine can do that using charcoal, can we use it in the home? it seems to imply that yes, we can. And again, uh, here in North America, we can often access good health care facilities. But many of your audience um, live in developing countries where I've worked and they don't have that accessibility. The access to health care, but also even here in North America and in uh, some of the other developed countries, uh, people in rural areas and in some of the urban areas mm -hmm. don't have access uh, to health care? Well, whether you're in a city next, even parked next to a, a hospital, I bet you have a fire extinguisher. You know, we never anticipate or expect a, a fire in our home, but we carry a fire, a fire extinguisher for that emergency. And if the poison control centers are telling us uh, we should have charcoal in our homes uh, for accidental poisoning, as we mentioned, Amanita, the poison mushroom, uh, doesn't it make good sense then we should have it in our emergency kits? But we talked a little bit earlier about some of the other reasons why we should have charcoal in the home, and I'd like to put up the graphic on um, calamities. Now, we've seen a few of those recently. Yes, we have, um, very sadly. The earthquake, the tsunami yes. in Indonesia, mm -hmm. and then closer to home we had the Hurricane Katrina. Katrina. I was listening to um, on the news, and it was saying it was like shock and awe 
the, as the hurricane came, came ashore, it took out uh, communications, it took out transportation, it took out emergency facilities, mm -hmm. it isolated communities, and then it cut off retreat. And we would like to think that would never happen in our neighborhood. But whether it's a flood, whether it's an earthquake, some of these calamities are coming closer. Wouldn't it make good sense to have not only a, a first aid kit, a lot of these people didn't even have a first aid no, kit, first, first but they should kit. have charcoal in that first aid kit along with them. And we really want to encourage our viewers to make sure they do have um, a very good first aid kit in their home sure. that would include um, activated charcoal. Tell us what it means for the charcoal to be activated. Okay, well, you take a raw charcoal, you've put your fire, your campfire out, you're out camping, you put the fire out, you have charcoal left over. Now, charcoal can come from any number of plant sources. You can oftentimes take coconut shells or bamboo, olive pits, uh, peat moss. They take this initial charcoal and then they subject it again to very high temperatures, 800 degrees Celsius, and then they bombard it with uh, steam or air, and it erodes this internal structure of the charcoal molecule, giving it a tremendous surface area. Surface area. Oh, yeah. Yes, you know, the standard dosing in pediatric um, poisoning is 50 grams, which is like five tablespoons, and that's actually equivalent to 10 football fields. So right. we can see how the when the charcoal is activated, just how much surface area there mm -hmm. is to actually absorb all these toxins and we say adsorb, A-D-sorb, not absorb, because it Correct. sucks these toxins onto its surface and all these um, meters of surface area. So it makes it very useful. And it holds those poisons until it's eliminated from the, from body. the body. Now, charcoal is known to absorb four, over 4,000 natural and man-made poisons and toxins. And that unique feature is used every day in the hospitals, but it has the other flip side to that. Right. Drugs, when, they, when we overdose on drugs, we want to use charcoal to bind those excess drugs because somebody's overdosed. Charcoal is, does not discriminate between poisons, and a lot of drugs are definitely poisonous. And so if, you're, if somebody's taking a medication, right. uh, they want to be aware that they're Charcoal, if they're taking charcoal, it's not going to discriminate between their medication and other poisons, toxins in their body. Exactly. So they'll want to give themselves, uh, depending on what, who you're reading in the literature, they'll say anywhere from one and a half hours before, one and a half hours after you take your medication, give yourself that window for your medication. Yeah, or even up to two hours. Could be, yeah. yes. So you want to you keep that charcoal away from the time that you're taking prescription medicines mm -hmm. because it will suck those medicines too. Yes. And make them ineffective. If, if, you know, if you're concerned, you should talk with your physician. Um, again, if, you're, if you can't take it internally because you're worried about it compromising your medication, you may apply it externally. Externally. Uh, it can be done in baths. Um, a warm foot bath, you can add charcoal to that um, as a detoxifier. For instance, gout. Um, I was working on a remote island in the Pacific and we, we came into this island one evening and we were under this large shelter called a maniaba and the minister came in, he came in stumbling and he was grimacing with grimacing. pain. Oh, sounds and like I gout. looked at him and I thought, Oh, what's wrong? And he says, oh, my big toe is killing me. I have not slept for weeks as oh. the pain is so severe. And I'm not, a, I'm not a physician, but I started thinking, I wonder, I wonder if it may be he's suffering from gout. gout. And not knowing, um, I, we made a, a foot bath with charcoal. Now, it wasn't this wonderful activated charcoal that is accessible here. We're on a remote island. I found some crude charcoal. We, we uh, pulverized it, put it in the water. I did have some charcoal capsules that I brought with me. Okay. I gave that for him to take internally. The next morning, I came down the path, and here's the pastor grinding up charcoal to make a hot foot bath. <laughs> it had worked for him. So it had absorbed the uric acid that crystallizes out in your extremities in gout had absorbed it through the skin. And so you can see that charcoal does work internally, but it also works externally. externally. So poultices I, and baths. 
And I think that Pasta was very happy with you. I think you'd be his best friend for clearing up his gout. Mm. Do you think he would want of you to have waited until there was a randomized double-blind controlled trial to prove that activated charcoal pulls uric acid um, through the skin? Well, it's very interesting information. You know, you can read all this, but it's a lot more friendly to use it yourself. And you know, I guess we're trying to acquaint our audience with this simple remedy. For many of them, it's what you might call off the wall. It's something brand new to them. But we're hoping that it begins with experimentation. We talked about being a gatekeeper. We are giving you the assurance that there are no side effects major side effects to charcoal, no known side effects to charcoal. It's something simple you can use in your home. Uh, again, it's used in hospitals as well. Right, so we know that it is very useful and sometimes when, some, when we know that something's useful, we can extrapolate and use it for mm -hmm. other things and right. we don't have to wait for those uh, randomized double blind right. controlled trials. We don't even wait for all those for half the drugs that we're using. Well, we talked a little bit earlier about calamities and maybe throw up the graphic now about aftershock. You know, when, when there is a calamity, war or earthquake, so forth, very quickly we find ourselves in a situation with poor sanitation, water contamination, power failure, transportation failure, spread of disease, and depending where you are, the availability of medical care. Um, if you have something in your home, you can start right now as you wait for emergency care to come to you. you you've spoken about the concept of gatekeeper. Mm. It's important that for all of us that we do become gatekeepers of our own health, of our family's health, that we do have the appropriate supplies ah. there, um, you know, with the recent Hurricane mm -hmm. Katrina. Um, it, was, it was very bad because the, the hospitals were flooded you know, and um, people could not get to the appropriate medical care. Right. Um, well, when you think that water is filtered through charcoal all around the world, right, from, absolutely. from Olympic aquariums to our drinking water, uh, up in space, the space station uses charcoal to clean their air and their water, their nuclear submarines, so it filters water, it cleans water, dirty water. Um, it's used in wound dressings. Johnson & Johnson has a layer, has a wound dressing with charcoal in it. The soldiers in Iraq have charcoal in their clothing okay. to absorb potential chemical warfare. But where do you get charcoal here at home? I was going to ask you that. Well, uh, if they don't have it, go to the pharmacy. I say if they don't have it, ask them, and in most cases they'll be glad, they'll be happy to bring it in for you. Health food stores and co-ops often have it. You get it in capsules, tablets, powder. Um, sometimes even as salve. Um, it's also dispensed in the poison control centers in a suspended solution. Sure. They just shake it up and give it to you immediately. But you know, in the home, if you, could, if you keep it in a dry, well-sealed container, it'll last indefinitely. When the, when the occasion arises, you just add it to the water, uh, stir it in, and drink it back. I've had charcoal under my kitchen sink for years, and I use it for mm -hmm. various things sore throat, um, gastroenteritis, right. ear infection. Right. So I've used it for a vari variety of things. It's not a substitute for medical care, but um, sometimes it can... It can tide it can you over. Until you get that opportunity exactly. to go there, you see. So right. The other, the other area I should bring up, because we all like animals. Right. Uh, in, the, in the story, in my, one of the stories in my book, I tell about this lady who operated a camel uh, expedition around Australia. She had uh, five or so camels and this one day they they um, stopped at this place, this oasis, and they put it in this compound and there, and there was a tree there that the lady didn't realize was deadly poisonous. And one of oh. her camels, she called it Greedy Gut, went over and started munching on this tree and then before long it was laying down on all fours and couldn't get it up. And she, in the process of trying to think what she could do, she remembered charcoal and she gave charcoal to it. But um, it seemed to help, but she tried other things as well. Eventually she came back and got some more charcoal, gave it again, and she was convinced that charcoal definitely helped. So much so that farther down the tri trail, again, one of the other camels ate something it shouldn't have eaten. She again applied the charcoal and she said charcoal was the remedy. 
But when I looked at the weights of her animals and the amount of charcoal she was giving, I'm convinced that if she'd given a lot more, those camels would have responded much quicker. Much quicker. There is a dosage. It's um, in the animal poison control centers, they recommend anywhere from one gram to three grams per kilogram of body weight animal. Uh, when, we're pres when doctors prescribe um, charcoal, they sometimes, to people, they usually come up with three uh, recipes or dosages. One is the one you mentioned, uh, anywhere up to 50 grams mm -hmm. uh, for a child. For a child. Uh, another one says uh, 10 grams of charcoal for every gram of poison, poison. that you've taken. Mm -hmm. But how many of you are going to sit down and say, well, I think I ate you know, 10 grams of charcoal? Give lots. You can't. You can give too little, but you can't give too much. And as long as you're given lots of fluid with it, yes, also, you'll have no complications. No, no, no problems with that. So yes, the animals is another whole area where we could be um, giving charcoal. Uh, a lady who had read the book mentioned that she went home and decided she was going to do her own experimenting, but not on herself. <laughs> she had an old dog, and she described. I didn't see the dog. She described this softball-sized growth in its abdomen. It made it very uncomfortable for the dog. She thought, well, I'll try charcoal. Can't hurt anything. So she wrestled a capsule of charcoal, activated charcoal, down the dog's throat every day for six weeks. Okay. Now, I never saw the dog. But she said after six weeks, she says, I'm convinced it worked. For whatever reason, she says it's down to the size of a golf ball. And she decided rather than using capsules, she'd get some powder. It's a lot more economical. It's cheap. And she would use that. She'd just mix it in with the food. I said, well, actually, they've been doing that. Uh, they do that on a commercial basis. They, in some uh, large um, animal factories, mm -hmm. they'll add charcoal to the feed, prevent them from um, bacterial infections bacterial and so infections. forth. Bacterial infections. Yeah. yeah. There's been a study in the American Journal of Gastroenterology that you know talks about how activated charcoal absorbs um, intestinal gas. Mm. And that is that is very effective, and so that that whole idea of absorption and that large surface area comes into play again with the animals. Um, and and it, there's nothing mad. I don't think there's anything magical about charcoal. It's simple. It works. Because it's scientific. It's, it, it's scientific. It's really pulling the, through electrical forces. Mm -hmm. It pulls materials to itself and then hangs onto it. One thought that came to my mind is when people do go down to purchase charcoal. Um, on the bottle, they will see activated. That's the first thing they want to see is it's activated. Is activated. There is another grade up from that called USP or US Pharmacopoeia grade, and that simply means that that charcoal has been washed, acid washed, to remove some of the ash content. It's a more pure form. In fact, the pharmaceutical companies use that grade of charcoal to clean their drugs, to take away objectionable odors or colors from their medications. From the medications. On the bottle, you will also, may also see it listed as a food supplement. Well, charcoal is not a food supplement because we don't digest we don't it. Digest we don't it. absorb it. Well, they're sort of in it's a conundrum. They don't know what to do with charcoal. It's not a mineral. It's not a supplement. But because they don't know what to call it, they call it a food supplement. Um, it does not. Di it does not absorb minerals and vi natural minerals and vitamins. There is some anecdotal evidence that it does absorb some man-made artificial uh, vitamins and minerals. But um, So with food, it's not going to absorb the, no, no, the they, natural nutrients the of The food, food industry puts it in licorice. They put it in jelly beans. It's in caviar. It's in mascara. It's, in, it's used in many different ways. Um, people who um, lose their their lower bowels, they have a colostomy. Um, for years, they used to give charcoal to these individuals to be able to handle not only the indigestion but also the gas, the gas that forms. The now uh, they make ostomy bags that are actually have charcoal filters on Around them it. to be able to handle that. But previously, these individuals used it on a regular basis and showed no signs of nutritional compromise. So you can put that fear to, to sleep. Uh, again, if you're drinking adequate water, you're having a good balanced diet, so forth, you have nothing to fear. So we're not just talking about using on an emergency basis. It's not, it's not like, oh, um, you know, instead of going to the emergency room, I'm going to take this. Mm -hmm. um, it, can, it can be used for just something simple. 
sole throat. Yeah, um, I know. Uh, Pink eye. Yes, um, some lifestyle programs that I've been involved in. They used it as a general detox. Um, people who wanted to get off drugs, um, street drugs, um, they wanted to detoxify their body. Um, I know of one uh, individual who her doctor gave her charcoal in a Dixie cup every day to, to take uh, mixed with olive oil because she developed Crohn's, very severe Crohn's. And with the Crohn's, there's a diarrhea forms. That's right. Uh, along with some of these other diseases, um, irritable bowel disease. Why and so don't you forth. tell our, well, let me tell the viewing audience about Crohn's disease. Mm -hmm. Um, Crohn's disease is an inflammatory bowel disease where there's a lot of inflammation and sometimes ulceration and uh, a lot of diarrhea. It's very uh, uncomfortable and disabling to patients uh, having to run to the bathroom, having to be close to a bathroom. And so to use something simple like um, activated charcoal makes a, a big difference to mm -hmm. them. So Absolutely. That, that Crohn's disease. Another thing that comes to mind is open ulcers. Um, it can be caused for any number of things. Um, when I was working on this remote Pacific Island, I got strep infections on my leg. It wasn't the flesh-eating kind, but it okay. literally ate out holes on my leg. And I used charcoal, and it didn't, it didn't do very much for the pain, but it did take care of the, it. Once I realized what was happening, it stopped the growth of the infection, and it did start to promote healing. healing. People who have uh, geriatric cases where they end up with these ulcers that don't seem to respond to anything. anything. Um, oftentimes a very mild uh, foot bath with charcoal will help to retard the, the growth of the infection and Absolutely. promote healing. And, and that's take using not only activated charcoal but some simple hydrotherapy. Exactly. That's another simple home remedy um, used in combination together. Right, well these are simple alternatives. Um, they they make us the gatekeeper, as you mentioned earlier, of our health. Um, we certainly can take advantage of the, the wonderful advances in health care that we've seen over the past century. But what do you do when you're away from home, away from a facility where you've come to depend upon it all the time? Should you carry it with you? Wouldn't it make perfect sense that not only do you have it in your home, but if you're traveling overseas, I know many uh, non-governmental organizations that are working overseas absolutely. on their checklist they say bring activated, activated charcoal. charcoal yes absolutely right. and in fact my patients who are traveling that's the first thing I tell them mm -hmm. to um, to make sure they've got in their travel kit and they say what's that okay and a quick explanation they said I'll take it with me and they were very happy to have that activated charcoal and they did well I bet they did. and so we don't have to wait for those randomized double-blind no. control trials we have a nice, simple home remedy, activated charcoal. John, you've given us a lot of good information today, and we just thank you for coming and My sharing pleasure. this information with our viewers. And to our viewers, we want to um, say to you, if you want to know more information, please contact uh, 3ABN so they direct you to the correct resources. And may God bless you as you use these simple home remedies.